today I am going to show you guys how I do my herringbone tops. I get a lot of questions on Instagram about how I do these, how I build them, how I put them together, and in this video I'm going to show you how. I hope y'all enjoy. This table is going to be a seven foot by four foot table, so that's why you can see we have some overhang. This is an eight by four piece of plywood, but I wanted to show you the first step in doing the herringbone pattern is marking your center line. So since this is a 48 inch wide piece of plywood, and I am using three quarter inch plywood. Um, okay, so since 48 inches, we marked 24, or I marked 24 inches um, as the center, and I drew a line going all the way down, and then you can see I drew a line uh, where the seven foot mark is, so I know where to stop. And this is going to be vital for making sure your herringbone is centered. So the next step is going to be marking the center point on your board. So this is the first board and I love this measuring tape. It is a self-centering measuring tape. You've probably heard me talk about it before, but as you can see, it is five and a half. So two and three quarters is the halfway mark. And that is where I marked my little dot there. So using a square, what we're going to do is line up so a lot of people think that you line up the corner with the center point, but if you do that, it's going to make your herringbone off a little bit. What you want to do to get it centered is center this line with that center point, not the corners. So we're gonna move that up until it is in line there. So that is where our first piece is going to go and then I leave a little bit of a um, ledge there just so it's e it's better to have cut off than cut it too short and it not be long enough so now to secure it I'm going to use wood glue and some finish nails so that way you can't see the Nail heads like you could with brad nails because brad nails are 16 gauge. So we're gonna use 24 gauge that leave such a minuscule hole and then we'll go through and patch everything before we finish it. But that is the method I prefer. Um, some people like to do it different ways and that's okay. Everyone has their own way of doing their thing, but I'm just showing you how I do it. just so I can show you how I lay them onto the top. So here are my right pieces, here are my left pieces. I went ahead and secured this one down using my square, as y'all saw my blooper, um, dropped it, but anyway, so once that one is square, then you're pretty much good to go. You don't need the square anymore. So, we have a right piece down, so now we're going to do a left piece. And what you're going to do first is flip it over. I like to use Tight Bond Ultimate Wood Glue. We are going to put a nice amount of that on the back. We want to make sure we really coat it And if y'all don't have one of these glue rollers, you need to get one. They're pretty cheap, they're like 10 bucks or something, but they are a lifesaver in the shop. So I'm gonna make sure that glue gets spread on all parts of that piece of wood. And once 
once it is, we are going to then align it with the edge of the other one. Press that nice and tight against there, making sure that it is even. And then using finish nails, not grab nails, we are going to pop those in. And these only serve as holding this down until the glue dries. Once the glue dries, that piece of wood isn't gonna go anywhere. So now I'm gonna do the rest of these pieces and you can kind of see how it will start to look. I'm sorry if there's background noise. My husband is cutting down a tree in the front yard. But the next thing we are going to do now is use our track saw to cut it to the seven foot by four foot um, size that we want. But we're actually gonna cut it a little bit less because we're gonna be adding a trim piece uh, that's a three quarter inch, so we're actually going to be doing it an inch and a half in from eight or seven by four. So that way, when we add that trim piece, it will be a true seven foot by four foot uh, tabletop. So we are going to get the track saw now and cut all of these edges off, and I'll show you how to do that. I have the Feztool TS75 track saw. I need to, my next purchase is gonna be a longer track so I don't have to do two cuts like you saw me do in the video. But this thing is a lifesaver if you're going to be doing a lot of woodworking. I highly suggest getting a track saw. You don't necessarily have to get a Feztool. I know they are the more expensive brand. Um, there is a Craig Jig AccuCut that I am kind of leaning towards trying out just because you probably saw in the video, I'm a right-handed person. So when I'm cutting long pieces, it's hard to, as you can see, reach over and cut this way. Um, and I don't feel comfortable cutting with my left hand. So the Craig Jig one actually has it the opposite way. So you cut this way. Um, so I'm actually looking into that one. The, this one does a phenomenal job. It's just my only complaint is that doing long cuts like this, I have to use my left hand and I just don't feel 100% comfortable using my left hand all the time. So just keep that in mind whenever you are track saw shopping. But um, this thing is a lifesaver for builds like this when you need to rip something and you can't do it on your table saw. So definitely look into a track saw if you are in the market for one. So the next step is going to be adding the trim to hide this from being seen. So I have just ripped down two inch wide pieces. And what we're going to do is bring it over to the table. 
we're gonna lay it out and we're gonna mark where it ends and then we will attach the side pieces on and then after we do that then we will do the end pieces and all i use just like with the top is the tight bond ultimate wood glue and some finish nails just to hold it in place until the glue dries and then that way it will be nice and secure against the side and it will give it a more finished look and with the two inch piece i can't hold that long of a piece but it will actually overhang just a little bit from the top so it'll cover if there's any slight you can see there's just a itty bitty slight gap there so it will cover that and make it all look nice and uniform Right now we have all of the trim on and I have already gone through and used my star bond to fill any knots and holes um, or like between the seams if there was a slight gap. So I have already done that on both the bench and all over the table. So now the part that everyone doesn't enjoy, sanding. Here is the finished product. This is after I stained and sealed it. Um, it's nice and smooth. Did a bunch of sanding. Um, but I'll do another video on how to finish it later but I just wanted to show y'all how to build this top so you can do it yourself um, and if you do please tag me and show me what you do I hope y'all enjoyed this video